Have you eaten today? If so, did you have to worry about mercury being in your food? Probably not, but for most of Canada's Inuit people living in the Arctic, this is a common concern. 2,000 tons of mercury are annually released into the atmosphere from global sources, and a portion of that deposits in the Arctic environment. Now this is problematic because mercury is a toxic metal with several negative health effects. These include memory loss, tremors, developmental impairment, and the list goes on. The largest source of mercury exposure to humans is through eating fish. But why is that? Well, it has to do with mercury's ability to accumulate in food chains. For example, mercury deposits in the water. It's consumed by little plankton, who are then eaten by something bigger, such as shrimp. They're then eaten by small fish, who are then eaten by big fish. And at every level of this food chain, the amount of mercury will increase. It's kind of like a video game. When you surpass more levels, you get more points. But in this case, more levels means more mercury. So that in the end, the big fish end up with the most. In the context of Canada, that big fish is Arctic char. It is the most commonly consumed fish in Nunavut, and it contributes greatly to food security for people living in northern communities. Now, Inuit are closely connected to the land. Consuming hunted and fished foods is not only important for diet, but also for cultural connectivity. But as we all know, climate change has thrown the Arctic into an unpredictable state. So the quality of these natural foods is in danger. But there is some good news. What if I told you not all Arctic char eat the same? So not all Arctic char will have the same amount of mercury. Some Arctic char will feed in the deep end. Now these food chains have more levels and therefore those fish end up having more mercury. Others, however, will feed in the shallow end. These food chains have fewer levels and therefore those fish have less mercury. My research is about determining which fish are feeding in the deep end and which are feeding the shallow end. Because this will identify the best source of Arctic char for consumption and it will allow us to provide safe and reliable food guidance for families who greatly depend on this fish as an important dietary component. Now it is important to keep in mind though, climate change can directly alter the structure of these food chains, either make, and that would affect the amount of mercury in the fish, either making them safer or more toxic. But by characterizing these food chains now, we can monitor how they're changing with climate change, which will allow us to make informed predictions on how the reliability of this food source will change over time. I'm doing this research today so that hopefully in the future, all Canadians can feel confident that the personal food choices they make won't put at risk to the toxic effects of mercury.